We are back and better than ever. Hello, everybody. Um, I am on the brink of a nervous breakdown. You know how I always say, like, I'm done renovating. I just want to, like, live in peace and tranquility. And then a week and a half passes, and I'm like, you know what? Let's replace these baseboards for sport. I do like the camaraderie of men in the home, handy men in the home, because the one that I married um, likes to break irrigation pipes for sport. So I decided that we needed to reside the exterior of the house. Um, it's taking a little bit longer than I had anticipated. And, you know, it's hard for a child to nap whilst having uh, wood drilled into the exterior of the nursery. So it's it's arose some challenges. Also, we have men here seven days a week because I run a tight ass ship and finding pockets of silence to record this podcast has been interesting. It's left me in very odd windows of time. I almost sloshed down two martinis last night and did a late night video recording, but I'm just not ready for that yet. And for the people who are like, Jackie, the format's changed. Honestly, thank you so much. Um, there is no format. There's never been a fucking format. And you can fuck all all the way off. It's exactly the same. It's always been the same. It's funny that people think I'm capable of change at this point. Consistency is the rhythm of my dance floor. You're welcome. Woohoo. Anyways, I want to float some ideas by you. And by you, I mean, I'm just thinking out loud. My next renovation on the horizon, and yes, I said I don't want to do anything for a while. I like fresh. I like change. Okay. You know, it's not changing my body. So I want to change the interior of my home to feel fresh and alive. I have one lingering powder room that hath not been touched, not fully touched. Okay. Just a gentle, a little tickle of the pickle, if you know what I mean. I woke up last night and I said, Jackie, Jesus Cristo has come over your body. And I'm thinking, we need to lacquer these walls. Jackie, what's lacquer? Lacquer is like almost like a resin coating of walls, okay? So that they are, they almost look like they're made of lucite, okay? It is a glossy, glossy, waxy finish. And I've kind of exhausted the wallpaper element of the home. So now I'm thinking we got to bring in woodwork and we got to bring in lacquering. I know that this conversation is only exciting for maybe like three and a half people listening at home. I just want to say this out loud. I'm thinking minty pistachio lacquered paneled walls for the powder room with a black, not to be oddly specific, but a black, white, green, pink, marble, chevron, and or herringbone tile floor, okay? A very chaotic, layered, mixed marble palette floor with lacquered walls, okay? Simple, demure, understated, okay? And I like all the grout lines of the very uh, intricate marble floors because once Clyde turns two, he's getting a unlacquered brass toothbrush with his name engraved and he is going to be scrubbing grout lines like his life depends on it because quite frankly there she goes it does so that's just like kind of what I'm working with um tomorrow Clyde and I are having a romantic staycation we are going to Los Olivos because it seems like a very kid-friendly place it's uh, a wine tasting location It is Santa Barbara wine country, just inland. It's going to be a supple 58 degrees and rainstorms. So I will be, (laughs) I will be um, shoving my kid in his duna and just making him sit with me while I wine taste, you know, for bonding. And I think it's going to be cute. They have fireplaces in the hotel everywhere. We'll get room service. We'll spoon We'll watch, I don't know, Mommy Dearest together and have cute baths with rose petals. And I just think it's going to be adorable. I haven't really gone, I haven't traveled alone with him. Well, actually, that's not true. 
I did. Um, I took him to a hotel when Andrew had the stomach flu for 24 hours. But this is like a 48 hour jaunt. Andrew is at the Masters. Um, He'll be really glad I could sneak that in because any chance he can get to remind people that he goes to the Masters and wear a coordinating, dare I say, buttercream yellow Masters um, sweatshirt and coordinating visor, he will. He likes to work it into every fucking conversation. Oh, see, when I was at the Masters and then they make the sandwiches and then they do the, like, I can't. I can't touch it because um, we're mourning and I need to be nice to him because we're going through a tragedy. Listen to last week's episode if you're not up to speed on the um, trauma bonding in the Schimmel hyphen Haas household. I feel like me and Heather touched on this, but it's very annoying, como se dice, irritating when your home life is so solid and happy And then you get bomb blasted by the trials and tribulations of external factors. And I know this is like me processing and my OCD just like this is how I compartmentalize feelings. But when I look at it from a logistical perspective, it's like Andrew and Jackie, happy, love each other, like each other, cute kid, okay, happy home life. And then it's just over here and over here. Like all the things that rattle my house have nothing to do with the people, places, or things that I have actively chosen. Do you know what I'm saying? Does this make sense? Is this like like a beautiful mind, John Nash? Are the strings attaching or are they not attaching? Let's get into some news, okay? Because... Mommy has an outline today because I want to like talk about some things that are going on in the world. Wait, I want to put this out into the universe. Okay. I had a thought the other day. I was like, I feel like, I feel like there are three celebrities. Okay. That might come on the show because they might like me. I had this weird (laughs) premonition. I feel like Florence Pugh. Is that how you say her name? I feel like she'd fuck with me. I feel like Rihanna would fuck with me if she gave me a chance and met me. She'd hate me. But like this is just in my head. And the third one would be Cara Delevingne. I feel like for sure Florence and for sure Cara Delevingne, I feel like they would fuck with me if they met me in person. I'm just going to throw that out there for no particular reason. Rihanna, I would give her any of my internal organs. I love Rihanna. Rihanna is my Beyonce. Okay. Rihanna is my Taylor Swift. Rihanna, I just want to wear oversized puffer jackets and belly chains and like split a penne a la vodka and just talk shit about people with Rihanna specifically. I see that for myself in the future. I feel like we'd have just the gayest old time if I wasn't a social liability. Anne Hathaway has a movie coming out approximately a month from now and I'm assuming we'll do, be doing some form of press and this is a public This is a public cry for help. So Anne Hathaway, if you're listening, there will be blood on your hands if you don't come on this podcast. I, we talk about Anne Hathaway a lot, the comma, comma, chameleon of it all. She, we don't deserve her. We just, we don't deserve her. She has been with us for like 20 years. The progression of Anne Hathaway, okay? She has bangs now. She is in a Versace mini dress, twerking at an after party and showing us how to eat an inside out cupcake. I don't know what the fuck is going on, but I want to peel back the layers. Anne Hathaway, just call me. Comma, comma, chameleon. Let's talk about the Spice Girls. Now, Gen Z, I feel like Gen Z misses so much. Okay, first of all, they're ripping sex in the city apart. I don't know if you've seen this, but Sex and the City is now on Netflix, okay? So Gen Z is getting their little woke phalanges all over and making a mess of it. Like they do everything else, okay? And I know it's so tired that some old fat bitch, okay, with crevasses on her forehead and a scrunchie in her hair starts talking shit about Gen Z. But they just, they're not bringing enough to the table, to ruin all of our nostalgia and memories, okay? And when did they become the commanders-in-chief of how to live 
They haven't lived, okay? They got fucking sidekicks when they were in the first grade. Call me back when you had to walk over a freeway overpass if you missed the bus with your NYC banana blueberry roll-on lip gloss. Like yours truly. My mom, God bless her, RIP, okay? My mother would not carpool. She had nothing to do. She was getting her nails done. She was getting her hair done. She wouldn't pick me up from school. So if I missed the bus, which I tried on purpose to do often, I would walk home from middle school across the freeway. Me and my little Roxy backpack and my gingivitis would just be hop, skipping and jumping over the fucking 101 freeway, okay? Walking home. It could have been... (laughs) It could have been a heat wave. It could have been 105 degree fire weather, okay? With my little Brillo pad up in a tight scrunchie just like it is now, except with a little poofy freeze at the end. And I'd be walking across the freeway without a cell phone, okay? With my little laminated bus pass swinging left to right, left to right, hanging from my backpack with a Lunchable, okay? That probably expired five months prior, Because, you know, oh, Chrissy, (laughs) Christy, oh my God, I'm being poltergeisted by my mother. That was odd. Sorry, I'll stop talking shit about you. Let's go back to the Spice Girls. So there is a Spice Girls group chat and Mel B, aka Scary Spice, was kicked out of the group chat because she keeps spilling the secrets from it. So the girls said... Viva la forever. What's the song? Viva forever. Goodbye to... Nope, that's Michelle Branch. That's a, that's a different icon. They kicked her out of the group chat. Nothing is worse. Actually, there is something worse. What's worse than being kicked out of a group chat is when someone passive aggressively leaves a group chat. Now, the last experience I had with this was one of my friend's ex-girlfriends Uh, we all had like a friend group chat. And when she left that group chat, it was closure in one way, but it was also like, oh my God, our friendship has ended. You only fucked with us because you were dating our friend and now you're removing yourself from the equation. It just felt like, it felt like a real bold move. And in the world of 2024, when you can just mute a bitch or mute a chat to leave, it felt like a nail on the coffin. You know what I mean? And I fucking hate a group chat. If it's more than three people, I can't fucking do it. Three people is a perfect Destiny's Child, Charlie's Angels, Trifecta, three's a crowd. You know, it's it's got one more person than a normal text message exchange. So it's got a little extra razzle dazzle, a little extra flair, less pressure to perform via text. But once you get into the four, five, six, seven, I had a group chat with 18 people. And as soon as it started, I swiftly exited. I said, love you all. I would sooner go to an ISIS prison camp than be a part of this group chat. I wish you well. XOXO, Jackie. And then I conveniently left. And that's just, it's the most gracious way to do it. But, you know, Mel B was running her mouth and... That bitch got kicked out, so we wish her well. My ranking of Spice Girls, if I'm just like spitballing here, growing up, obviously, I was a baby Spice Girly. Actually, that's a lie. I was a Ginger Spice Girly first, okay? It went Ginger Spice, Baby Spice, uh, Posh Spice, Scary Spice, Sporty Spice. I never fucked with Mel C., Okay, I just didn't. I didn't get the Adidas track suits. I feel like the nose ran. She just, I just didn't get it. Okay, now hindsight being 2020. Posh Spice, Posh Spice, Posh Spice, Posh Spice, Scary Spice, Ginger Spice, Scissor Sister, Sporty Spice, Baby Spice. It's amazing what growth will do to you. <laughs> Moving right along. Okay. 
This week's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is my go-to recommendation for anyone who needs a website. They are all-in-one website platform, makes it easy for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. With Squarespace, you can create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time, all in one place, all on your terms. Do you guys know how to start building a website? I sure as don't, but Squarespace made it so easy to create and personalize my website with their new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. I was able to choose from professionally curated layouts and styling options, which helped me tailor my site to my specific needs, okay? I am no tech wizard. The process was so painless and honestly, fun, okay? It's kind of like the adult version of customizing your MySpace page, also know that Bitch Bible has video. Squarespace is a great option for me because of their video collection. So you can upload video content, organize your video library, and showcase your content on beautiful video pages, okay? Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to www.squarespace.com forward slash Bible to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Bikini season is right around the corner, but whoever actually has the time to prepare for it? Not me. Well, this spring, you can eat stress-free with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready-to-eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also, discover more than 60 add-ons every week like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and kick bikini season's ass. Factor meals are tailored to your schedule. You can customize your weekly meals with the flexibility to get as much or as little as you need and pause or reschedule deliveries to suit your lifestyle. And I know what you're thinking. If it's good for you and convenient, it can't be that good, right? Wrong. Okay, I tried all of these. They are delicious. Factor Meals features premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, truffle butter, roar, broccolini, and asparagus. Factor Meals are so good. You're going to absolutely love, love, love them. Bitch Bible approved times 10. Head to factormeals.com slash Bible 50 and use code Bible 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That is code Bible50 at factormeals.com slash Bible50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. In more pressing news, um, Pookie met Selena Gomez last week. She flew to New York with Jet and they attended a rare beauty event. I'm proud of the pookster. You know, she came in like a wrecking ball and she's really just clung with her clean girl bubble bath pearl chrome talons into this rod, into this wav. She's just hanging on for dear life. And, you know, the pookster... She almost got canceled, obviously, because those photos of her resurfaced from college, um, attending an antebellum party. But Pookie said, no, I'm here to fucking stay, okay? I've got a Javiana slip on. What did she do? Oh, my God, this morning. It was the first thing I saw. And I'm like, you know what? Today's going to be a good day because Pookie's in Javiana's. She did her outfit of the day this morning. She was wearing a Leogens jean a flared jean, a white crop top in the dead of spring, a cross body bag, um, kind of a a Pandora adjacent charm bracelet, and she was rocking white Havianas. And Jet was about to take her on a shopping spree because she lost her luggage. And by she, I mean Jet. Here's the thing. Pookster is perfection in my book. I'm totally all aboard the SS pook pook ship the pook tannic okay which is ironically what they call jet in the um closeted homosexual chat rooms okay he is the he is the pooper scooper if you know what I mean do we think that after he puts pookster to bed (laughs) he tucks in the pookster in her pjs that Jet just saunters off to an unlacquered powder room, okay? Burner phone in hand and just wanks it till he's got fucking rug burn on his dick to gay porn. 
that's not an insult. Once again, I would like to clarify that insinuating someone is a closeted homosexual minus the closeting is a compliment because I do prefer homosexual men. So I just want everyone to live in their truth. And I'm just saying, if it's not true, then it's not offensive. Here's the other thing. Okay, somebody was listening back to old episodes and they sent me a quote that I said that, you know, most of my old episodes are really, really tragic and desperately embarrassing. Like I, I cannot listen to them. My whole body goes into anaphylaxis. But I said something a la 2016 that I think still really slaps. It's not mean if it's funny, you know? And like I always say, if if something really does offend you, it's because you're too close to it and you're self-absorbed. Because if you can remove yourself from the equation, then nothing can hurt you. You know what I mean? Even if it's applicable to you, it should only make it funnier. I don't make the rules, okay? I'm just a linguist, a philanthropist, and... A sociologist, dare I say. So Pooks and Jet roll on through. They should come on this podcast too. I would love to do some marital counseling. I think they're happy together. By the way, you know who makes a great husband? A closeted homosexual. That's a fucking dream guy. He is a dream in his page denim, okay? In his Hermes belt. If Andrew, I want to say this very loudly for the people in back. If Andrew came home with a little orange box and a men's Hermes belt, I would never have sex with him ever again for the remainder of our days. I can't think of anything less attractive than a man in a logoed anything, anything with a logo disgusting like if Andrew walked in in like a fucking Gucci tracksuit we would never have sex again if he walked in with an Hermes belt with a big fat H or a like a Balenciaga sneaker is Balenciaga I I think they're canceled I they're the if you go to a Nordstrom's okay is it Nordstrom or Nordstrom's people get very upset you go to that designer clearance rack it's all fucking Balenciaga first of all All the clothes are ugly. They're so stupid. They make no fucking sense. Nothing. The shirt on a shirt. Google Balenciaga shirt on a shirt. What about when they sold Ikea bags? They're fucking with us. They're abusing consumerism. And we're all lifeless little deranged bots. Suckling at the teat of consumerism. And Balenciaga proved that narrative. Okay. Now they're canceled because of their, you know, that campaign. But whatever. Andrew rolled through in a chunky Balenciaga sneaker. I would never speak to him again. It doesn't matter if he like fostered like Shih Tzus out of a river, okay? Dying Shih Tzus. It wouldn't matter if he cured cancer. It wouldn't matter if he was the lone uh, social justice warrior for world peace. I would never ever speak to him again because I would be so insanely disappointed in his decisions and listen hardly the fashion icon over here but that it's just unacceptable it's not sexy but you know what do you jet and pookster I am rooting for you I think you guys are gonna have honestly I'm not even being condescending I think they're gonna make it she seems very respectful to me and maybe you know you can't judge a couple based on their um Instagram social media presence but she seems it's rare to me I don't see it often but she seems like a very you know supportive and uh I don't want to say docile because that's anti-feminist she seems like a a really a loving wife and I'm rooting for them we're all rooting for them Uh, did I just talk about Pookie and Jet for 14 minutes I think so Let's talk about the question on everybody's mind. Is Coachella dead? Okay. As a frequent music festival attendee, um, which is a shock, actually, pre-baby and pre-COVID, I I did the festival thing, not really necessarily by choice, but Andrew used to go 
for the month of the festivals, because, you know, they do the first two weeks of Coachella and then they do Stagecoach and then they do Old Person Coachella. Um, that's I don't know what the official festival title is, but that's just my my personal name for it. Old Cella, Geriatric Palooza. So it's four weekends in the desert. Andrew and his writing production crew used to get a house for the month of all the festivals because there's a lot of people in town, artists, producers, writers, whatever. And we would just post up like little desert rats for the month. And it was perfect. I, they called me Jackie Springs. I thrive in the desert. It's great hair weather. They do amazing pours of martinis. I like, you know, a dry chicken piccata with a Santa Ana wind called me old fashioned. I love being around old people. I just, it's where I do my best work. I love strip malls. I love old people. I love house pour martinis. Something about a La Quinta martini just hits differently. And yes, it's 145 degrees out. And yes, the blue cheese melts and gets swampy in your lukewarm martini. But they just know how to shake them out there. And it's crazy because people are so old. You'd think they'd have these brittle little wrists. But these, you know half-dead bartenders are shaking like their life depends on it because, well, it does. And the ice chips are always just perfection. The salads are always dismal, but like in a beautiful way. There's something just so predictable about the desert, Palm Desert, La Quinta, Rancho, Mirage. Palm Springs is a little too trendy for me. I like old school, like tried and true retro desert energy And I've been saying this a lot. I'm trying to, you know, manifest it, even though I don't really believe in manifestation. Um, I do see myself in a Bermuda short with a visor, whipping and naining through the streets of La Quinta with a road cock, like in two years, okay? On a golf course with tiki torches. No, we don't fuck with tiki torches. Did we learn nothing from Real Housewives of New York season 11? Tiki torches are bullshit. I don't, I'm not entirely sure what they represent, but it's something problematic. So we don't fuck with a tiki torch. I just would like an outdoor fire feature, a zero edge infinity pool over a preferred golf course and indoor outdoor living. Okay. With a, with a travertine and a brown granite countertop. I want to lean into the desert lifestyle. You've all heard me complain about my post-baby midsection and my tits that hang down to my ankles. And like many of us, listen, I've researched the crazy diets, the weight loss schemes, you know, to get me back in ship shape. But so many of these schemes promise so much and you end up just gaining back all the weight. It's not sustainable. And, you know, we don't have time for it. Sonabella works differently. Sonabella will help you permanently lose unwanted fat and inches. Whether you've got stubborn tummy fat, like me, thigh fat, arm fat, you can get rid of it permanently. Sonabella doctors are masters in micro laser fat removal and use modern techniques to eliminate sagging loose skin. They'll make it all disappear in just one visit. You don't have to feel embarrassed, shy, and uncomfortable in your own body, okay? Take charge. You definitely don't have to hide in baggy clothes anymore. Ding, ding, ding. Give yourself the gift of a full body reset with Sonobello. Get your curves back, sister. You deserve it. Schedule your free consultation and learn all about micro laser fat removal with Sonobello. And Sonobello is running a great special right now. Visit sonobello.com slash Bible. That is sono, B-E-L-L-O dot com slash Bible. I love to cook. I'm a domestic goddess. I think it's like the most relaxing thing at the end of the day. But you know what I hate? Thinking about what to cook. I have decision fatigue all day, every day. And especially like having to go to the grocery store and then like buy it and then I forget something and then I got to go back and then it's like time is money, all of the things. So I finally found a better way for all of us, you know, bleeding out for the family This is my new sponsor, Marley Spoon. I'm very excited to share this with you. Marley Spoon knows bland food is boring, so they created the best tasting meal kit money can buy. And with my code BITCHBIBLE, you're going to get up to 25 free meals, okay? With Marley Spoon, you can choose from over 100 delicious recipes every week from Cajun spiced chicken to poached salmon to butternut squash gnocchi to a vegan burrito bowl. Get out of here. My favorite recent meal from Marley Spoon was the grilled pesto chicken. I also gave some to Clyde. Delish. A lot of the recipes are completely customizable, whether you're looking for vegetarian meals, family-friendly dishes, low-carb options. Marley Spoon has the best food that you're going to be excited 
to ingest. I love it because I'm able to cook food for myself that tastes amazing, but skip all the extra bullshit I don't like. You can shop their selection of 125 plus items like seasonal produce, ready to heat options, meal shortcuts, and handy snacks, and easily add them to your next Marley Spoon box. Experience the most personalized meal kit today with Marley Spoon. Head to marleyspoon.com forward slash offer forward slash bitch Bible and use code bitch Bible for up to 25 free meals. Are you kidding me? That's right. Up to 25 free meals with Marley Spoon. One last time. That is marleyspoon.com backslash offer backslash bitch Bible for up to 25 free meals and make sure you use my promo code bitch Bible so they know that I sent you. Back to Coachella. So I did, we did the Coachella thing. Now, Handy Andy does not enjoy music festivals. I think for him, they feel like work. And he always like is, he has to wear earplugs because he's got tinnitus because he just like used and abused his ears from a young age. And he's just critiquing the mix and he wants to be by the sound booth because the mix isn't right. And he starts critiquing. It's just, he doesn't enjoy it. You know, he feels on the clock, whatever. I love Stagecoach. I do think that the Stagecoach crowd is terrifying. These bros have a lot of pent-up testosterone, and they're crushing Bud Lights from, like, 10 a.m. on, and they want to, like, mosh and have, like, chicken tenders, and I just – it's a lot of – it's a lot of sweaty white people in tank tops, and it's just – it's a it's a different crowd. Coachella is sad and sceny and stagecoach is uh white and scary. <laughs> it's true. No truer words have ever been spoken. Um the headliners this year, now I love Tyler the Creator, so I would have gone for that. Huge, huge fan. And Sabrina Carpenter would have loved to see her. My friends have written her her pass three bops so you know we got to support the tribe keep the lights on but um I just you know obviously with child it wasn't going to happen for us this year sales were down and a lot of people attribute that to Beyonce and Taylor Swift just raping the market with their stadium tours and I mean that like in a consensual happy you know beautiful way Uh, not in a literal way. So, you know, the stagecoach, or I'm sorry, the Coachella content this year is interesting. I feel like the fashions are understated, which is nice. I mean, thank God you never found me throwing deuces in front of that fucking Ferris wheel with a flower crown and like a mesh halter top. Thank fucking God, okay? Because I was a click away. Just one motherfucking click away. And... You know, one has to wonder when you see these girls in their, you know, Paco Rabanne paillette tank tops made of metal, like, are they getting third degree burns out there in the desert? They're just sacrificing everything for the Luke so they can go to like the nylon magazine party in a combat boot. I don't know. I just don't get it. I'm not there anymore. If I was going to Coachella, my Luke would consist of plain white t-shirts, jeans like baggier jeans obviously to fit my body type a sensible sneaker with arch support and maybe a back satchel straight hair cool sunglasses and mixed metal jewelry less is more at Coachella now long gone are the days of you know like tooth gems can we wait I feel like we've never discussed this I need to make a public service announcement for for women over the age of 12. I'm probably mispronouncing this, but if you have the take two audacity to put an adhesive little baby gem, okay, a little Swarovski crystal on your incisor tooth, tooth, tath, teeths, teeths. Is it an in, is it in Kaiser or is it in scissor? I have another confession to make. Do you know, I wasn't going to say this, but it came up via text message yesterday. So I feel like I need to purge my soul because I don't want to live with secrets. Do you know, we're going to get back to the tooth gem of it all in a second. I thought 
that New Mexico, I have to close my eyes because I'm just so embarrassed that I don't want to make eye contact with anyone or anything and look into the light. I thought Mexico City and New Mexico (laughs) were the same thing. The Windy City. Someone was like, oh my God, like I'm in New Mexico. And I was like, yeah, everyone says that it's so cool now. They've got the greatest fashion and food and like I'm dying to go there. And I didn't realize that New Mexico, a.k.a. Albuquerque, um, and Mexico City are two completely different places. I thought New Mexico was like slang for Mexico City because my fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Murphy, went blind in the fifth grade before we tackled geography. So that's my excuse. I will die on that fucking hill. Had no idea. And don't repeat it. Don't ever repeat it. It's so embarrassing. If you have the nerve, okay, to put a fucking jewel on any of your teeth, a premolar, a bottom tooth, you hang it to the Louis, it picks up a little light. What is wrong with you? Who fucking hurt you? Okay. How much do you hate yourself that to feel just a little je ne sais quoi that you have to peel back a little poly pocket, clears accessories rhinestone and put it on your fucking tooth and god forbid okay you find yourself at the slice house or whatever is what's the pizza at coachella the pizza at coachella is reason enough to go is it pizza pie pie party i forget what it's called spicy pie is it called spicy pie i don't know they have the best fucking pizza at coachella god forbid you throw back a couple too many road cocks, okay, on your way to Coachella, and then you get a little hungry, and then you saunter to the general admission spicy pie counter, and you get yourself a beautiful slice of pepperoni pizza, and then you, your jewel, adheres to the grease, and then you swallow a Swarovski crystal, and then you shit a Swarovski crystal, okay? You've got little sparkle poops. You're disgusting. You're broken. You're sad. And you need to fucking look inward. Speaking of speckled feces. I bought Clyde the Rainbow Fish book because from what I remember, it was one of my favorites as a child. We need a lot of revisions to the children's books. We've tackled The Giving Tree. It is toxic, abusive, extortion, and just irresponsible and in. 2024 where we are and by we I mean not me but other people very concerned about the state of nature um, to ruthlessly barrage and take from this sad little tree and then publish it in a children's book with a happy ending is irresponsible and disgusting. Shel Silverstein creepiest author photo you've ever seen in your entire life google it um, should be ashamed of herself ashamed of herself only second to the rainbow fish I must have liked this book as a child just because it was sparkly and holographic and I probably couldn't read until I was like 15 years old so it kind of tracks and makes sense it was just tucked in my little Roxy backpack after I was bop bop bopping over the 101 freeway at fucking age 11 the rainbow fish is a bit of a cunt, okay? A beautiful cunt. She's got all of these sparkly little scales. Actually, the rainbow fish is a man. Let's call him Jet, okay? And he's got all of these special sparkly little scales and he won't not, he won't talk or affiliate with all of the regular fish. And then one day he realizes he's miserable and completely antisocial. So he starts giving away his scales begrudgingly, not out of the goodness of his heart, only because he is isolated and figures like, okay, whatever, I'll give some of these away so people will talk to me and not shun me. And it just doesn't have like a real mission statement. It's not coming from a pure place of... Um, generosity. The rainbow fish is conniving, manipulative. It feels passive aggressive. And now he's also not as cute. So like nobody wins. Yeah, everyone gets a sparkly scale. But, you know, now everyone is just on the same playing field. He's probably suppressing deep resentment for all the other fish for taking his sparkle away. And it wasn't like he became a better person after it. He did it only because someone else told him to. 
And those are not the types of lessons that I want to teach my child. What lessons do you want to teach your child, Jackie? I don't know. If you're not first, you're last. Not everyone's that smart. Not everyone's that thin. And not everyone's that pretty. So buck up, buttercup. It's a big, bad world out there. That's just kind of like my mantra. And something that maybe I'm projecting because, like I said, I've had quite a few epiphanies post-birth where I realize um, maybe I'm not as pretty as I thought I was. I'm not as thin as I thought I was. I'm not as funny as I thought I was. I'm not as smart as I thought I was. I'm not as rich as I thought I was. But here we are. (laughs) Motherhood is humbling. You know, we're just all doing our best. And if you can live um, just half to Lulu and half just fully transparent with yourself and you kind of seesaw from both day in and day out, like some days I wake up and I'm like, Jackie, like no place I'd rather be. Cue Jess Glynn. Like I want to be in my house with my husband, with my kid, in my body, like fully, fully living as myself like most of the time, despite all of these external factors, you know, and I'm so happy. And then some days I'm like, why can't I just get a tapeworm and some veneers, you know? And it's just minute by minute, hour by hour, just kind of navigating this new existence with screaming child. But it's all good. It's giving my life more dimension and depth and I'm just going to shut the fuck up and go back to my my outline. This is why we can't have nice things. Uh, butt cracks are back. OK, according to, I don't know, Cut, Vogue, some some third party website. Um, butt cracks are being shown on runways in editorial photo shoots. The low rise denim craze is here. You know, nipples were very hot for a very long time. Also, I got like an email from Skims that the nipple bra is back. I'm not wearing a bra with faux rubber nipples. Not today, not tomorrow, not next month. I don't, as someone who very proudly and boldly has inverted nipples, which thank God didn't have to breastfeed. I mean, I wake up and first thing on that gratitude journal is these inverted nipples because... I mean, it's just, it's been a blessing, the gift that keeps on giving. And something about, I don't like fraudulence in any capacity. I don't want faux nipples under my t-shirt. I find that to be odd, but like die for skims beyond. So, you know, people are into it. But now the ass crack of it all, I do not like that. I don't like thong bathing suits. They feel unhygienic to me. I don't, I'm not super comfortable with my butthole and it kind of freaks me out when people are too loose with it you know what I mean like a thong bikini do you understand the maintenance and attention to detail that a thong bikini requires like you get one gust of wind and you could have like a rogue ringlet by your tush that you just don't know about okay unless you are You've got like a mirror while you're getting waxed. There's always things that go under the radar. And a butt crack, I'm not down. Alexander McQueen uh, originated the trend in the 90s. So we can thank him for that. And I just don't understand like the appeal of it. I don't want to free the nipple. I don't want to free the butt crack. I'd like to just go, I want to go Amish. I want to bring back caftans, tunics, moo-moos, oversized everything. I never want it to leave. I'm, I want to bring back an Amish aesthetic. I don't, I'm not ready for low rise. I'm not ready for crop tops. I'm not ready for belly button rings. I'm not ready for butt cracks and I'm not ready for nipples. And that's just my hot take on it. As an unlicensed interior designer, I am so particular about what I put on my walls and I frame everything, okay? I frame canvases, I do digital downloads online and then get them professionally framed and I swear to God, I have the receipts to prove it. Before FrameBridge became a sponsor of this podcast, 
it is and has been my go-to framing resource because the frames are top quality. They're fashion forward. They're so affordable. They are quick and they are quite simply the best, okay? FrameBridge will frame anything. If you've got a diploma, if you've got a digital photo, if you have an old picture, I had an old photo of like an aerial shot of my home from the 70s that I sent into FrameBridge and had framed in a beautiful like kind of brushed brass frame and it is in my entryway table. Every single thing in my house that is framed, I used FrameBridge, okay, period hand to God. Framebridge custom frames your piece in their studio using the highest quality materials and ships it to your door in days for free. Okay. So you can easily order anything online at framebridge.com. They also have retail stores. Another amazing resource that Framebridge has is like curated gallery walls. So you know, they teach you spacing measurement. They have really cool, like eclectic. They have this new like pink burl wood it's to die for it. You have to use it. See why Framebridge has been trusted to frame over 2 million pieces, probably most of which are in my home. Visit framebridge.com or a local Framebridge store to get started in custom frame just about anything that is framebridge.com. Can we talk about women's basketball for a second? So Andrew and I are at lunch right before he left. And we I know the lay of the land. On a Sunday, wherever Andrew and I go has to have a TV, Saturday and Sunday, because if we don't have access to a TV at lunch, he's watching it on his thigh. He puts it on, he kicks it horizontal, and he's hiding it from me. I've never understood how this person, my husband, always, and I mean always, has some sporting event to watch. Golf, basketball, football, college football, high school football, high school basketball, and now... Hold, please. Women's fucking basketball. I saw him watching women's basketball the other day. I said, Andrew, are you okay? I need to do a wellness check on this, bro, because women's sports, embarrassing. (laughs) I'm joking. I'm not really joking. If I saw him watching women's softball, I would be slightly concerned it just feels off brand but he's been watching so much women's basketball and you know being that I am the face of the feminist movement I was just perplexed he started to tell me that there's some basketball player that scored more points than anybody in the world I don't know I'm paraphrasing I don't listen the second he starts talking sports I glaze and you want to talk about a dude walking around with a black fucking veil when Kobe Bryant tragically passed I say this earnestly and honestly. Andrew was in the fetal position. And obviously, if you live in Los Angeles and you love the Lakers, you know, it was a, for so many reasons, such a tragedy. The children, like, it's incomprehensible. But Andrew was inconsolable, specifically over Kobe Bryant, for about a month. Like, it would be three weeks later And he'd start to get teary eyed and I'd say, Andrew, are you okay? What's wrong? And he's like, I just can't believe he's gone. He was my hero. Like he, so this man is very, very invested in all sporting events, sports players, it's toxic masculinity. And now Handy Andy has jumped to women's basketball. So I think, I don't know. I mean, my gay assistant put this in the fucking outline, the LSU woman's basketball star Angel Reese is this the woman that everyone's obsessed with I thought her name was Katie but I think everyone's name is Katie Ashley I am trying to record a goddamn podcast okay to pay my goddamn my goddamn bills like a young businesswoman see she says she doesn't live for the lights but my sister okay is walking walking past my studio back and forth okay because that bitch Everyone in this family is just dying for a goddamn microphone, dying for it. I'm like, I get it, okay? It's just, it's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. Anyways, basketball star Angel Reese is headed for the WNBA. Who cares? Who cares? Cut all this shit out. I don't care. I don't want to talk about women's fucking basketball on the Bitch Bible podcast. This is excruciating. Bye-bye.